Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got something exciting to show you and it is a new scanner from Creality. Creality have been kind enough to send out their latest scanner, the CR Scan Otter. They've released two scanners just recently for their anniversary, the Otter and the Raptor. Today we're looking at the Otter. The interesting thing that I like about this scanner is it has some very nifty features, but the main thing, as you can see on the box here, it can scan small to large objects. So the, the claims are that it can scan from a one centimeter cube up to a two meter cubed space. So you can go down to really small objects, but also very large objects with the one scanner. I always say to people that scanners have their individual purpose. So sometimes they're very good at small objects. Sometimes they're very good at large objects. Sometimes they're very accurate, but also the technology is just moving at such a rapid pace that a lot of these scanners are just coming out to the consumer market very quickly. But this is their latest one, uh, apart from the Raptor as well, but we're going to take a look at the Otter today. So thank you for, to Creality for sending this to me. They haven't paid me for this unboxing or anything, they've just sent me the scanner and I'm allowed to keep it, so thank you to them. Let's get into the box. So fairly basic box, nothing really interesting on the outside, but as soon as we get inside we're going to be looking at the casing that it comes in. So it's very nice that Creality always packages their scanners in a nice little case. It's typically this kind of soft material and it does have little hooks on the sides as well for a belt strap. If we just unzip this and it does have a little handle on the top as well. So we'll open that. Obviously quite a few things in here so let's have a look at this first front pocket. Okay uh, so we just have a little quality check card. We have some after sales service details basically just covering some of the warranty information. This I believe is a scanning mat so we'll have to look at the instructions to see how this works but a lot of scanners can't really see black so this kind of acts like a key out so you can put your object on here, scan it and it's not going to really see the mat itself. Uh, it's also nice that they give us some tracking dots as well. These scanners usually say they don't need tracking dots but in certain situations it can help to have these especially when you have very large symmetrical geometry where it needs those points of reference to see that bigger picture of an object otherwise you just end up losing sync with the scan. Now this is a calibration board and there are some details on the back on how to do this so we'll probably have to set this up on our first use. Now our next pocket has some other goodies it has a couple of these little USB-C dongles, cleaning cloth, uh, a lanyard for the scanner itself like a little wrist lanyard and then a strap for the case itself so that would go onto the hooks. And then under this sleeve, I have opened this before because I was trying to unbox and I actually realized I didn't film the whole thing so otherwise this would have been in some plastic like this. This is just the power cable and data cable for the scanner. It's cool that this uses just one cable. So USB to your computer, USB-C to the scanner, that's it, that's your power, that's your data. No messing around with a bunch of cables and power cables and all sorts of stuff. Uh, this is just a USB to USB-C cable. This is really cool. They have sent a little test scanning object. How cool is that? So it's a little owl in an egg. A lot of little fine details. I'm really interested to see how this actually scans and I believe it comes in every package so really cool. And this can capture color as well. They, if they're confident enough that they put this in the package I'm really interested to see what this can do. And then the Otter scanner itself. And here we go. So it's quite small, not as small as the ferret which I have here. You can see the ferret is crazy crazy small compared to this. So it's about three times the size of the ferret, but it could probably do a lot more than the ferret as well. Take a look around the scanner. You have a Creality logo on the top, nothing on the top and bottom edge or side edges. On the bottom, blank, but we do have a little rubber protector here, which goes to a camera mount socket. On the back, we have the USB-C port for powering and data transmission. And another thing which is really cool about this is a button for controlling the scanner. Now it doesn't press, so it's obviously a capacitive touch. Uh, we have a play button for starting and stopping the scanner, plus a negative for adjusting the exposure setting or the brightness setting 
It's also LED backlight. So the cool thing about this is it's going to display different colors based on what the scanner is doing. So I believe it's green and ready to scan or it is scanning. It will then, when you are scanning, it will change the color based on how far you are to the object. So if you're too close or too far away, uh, if you lose sync, it will flash. So it's really cool that you can control this scanner just from using the touch button on the back and you're not having to use a mouse and look at a screen and trying to click and move around at the same time and still of course have a screen off to the side so you can see exactly what you're producing with the scan but so much easier just having this control so the next thing of course is the front or where the cameras are itself so we have our projector lens the two outside from that are our near or close object cameras the furthest point are our long distance cameras and then this camera just here is for color capture and then we have two leds for lighting the object as well so projector close far color and led there's a lot packed in to this one device so from here i believe i'm going to install the software we might do a quick sort of scan straight out of the box just to see what sort of results we get and then in the future i'm going to do some follow-up videos where i get more familiar with the software and scanning kind of give you a, my opinion on this device itself so let's jump over to the computer and see what we can do there now just to show you quickly what my scanning setup looks like before we get into the software itself. So I have the Otto scanner here. It's very close to the object. It needs about this distance. Even a bit closer is good. And it's on a little turntable. So this is connected to my computer. It's just got the one cable. And the reason why I've got it on this tripod is because the turntable will turn around for me and I can just adjust this up and down as needed. So I find having a tripod keeps the scanner in its most optimal position and its most stable position to make the scanning easier. And then all I have to do is just move this around as I need. Okay, so we'll jump into the software and let's do a scan and see how this goes. Okay, so here we are in the Creology Scan software. I'm going to go through a scan to show you the process of actually doing a scan for this little owl statue that comes with the kit. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to use the software as I'm going to leave that for a future tutorial, but I'll just do a little general overview. So this is the main screen once you actually plug in the scanner and open the software. It should say something like this. You're connected and you're ready to do a scan. On the left hand side there is all your projects. On the right hand side we can see some details of the scanner that's connected we can go into the calibration and there's some handy links here as well such as going to the wiki page some tutorials community downloads and creality clap you can also open a project or import from foam and if you have any projects on the side you can simply click on them and open them up as well or you can click on the burger menu and you can rename it or open or delete it or go directly to the folder so we want to do a new scan we will click on new scan and we need to give the project name so we're going to say our and i've scanned it a few times so let's say number four you should see a configuration so this is your chance to sort of select what type of scan you're going to do or what kind of object you're going to scan and it has a few options here and when you hover over it it should give you a bit of a description on what those those settings are for so for our small scan it's a very small object we're going to want uh, our normal object it is a small object and so it gives you a bit of a reference size there for small the feature we're going to use the geometry it's going to be high quality and in this case i do have a turntable now turntable doesn't come in the kit from what i believe but i have my own from previous scanners so once you have all that set up you can click on scan now if your scanner is connected properly you should start seeing an image on the left here we have a view of the exposure so it's just giving you a black and white screen of the object kind of giving you an idea of the brightness below that is more a just direct camera feed of what the camera is looking at and you will notice that they are off center a little bit so this one's a bit more in the center of the eye and as you can see here it's off to the right a bit more you should go from this screen when you're trying to center your object keep this screen in the center and just use this as a guide so our main screen in the middle here is the actual object we're scanning we have our start button stop button and some undo redo sort of features up here we can change to switch the distance mode so either just a direct arrow of how optimal our distance is to the object as you move the scanner closer or further away it's going to give you an idea of whether it thinks it's in the correct range or we can use this which kind of gives you a bit more reference of the points the idea is to try to keep it in the optimal range and not go too far into the move closer or move further away 
Also up the top here, there's another burger menu. We can click on that. This is where we can either set the infrared exposure to auto or manual. So if you click on manual, then you can adjust it as needed. So when it's red, it's overexposed. If it's blue, it's underexposed. So you want something kind of in the middle, not too much red. Uh, but in my case, I'm just going to leave it on auto. We can also rotate the camera. So if you click on that, it's going to flip it. So if you have the scanner on a horizontal or vertical axis, you can flip this around to actually orientate it correctly to how you have it orientated. And then the next menu down here we have for our RGB exposure. So we can again do manual for this and adjust it as we want or just set it on auto. And we can also turn on the LED lighting on the scanner itself. I think if I was to turn it on and for it to capture the color texture, it would certainly be overexposed. So I'm going to leave that off. Okay, with all that covered, um, I'm just going to try and center the object in this camera feed here in the exposure camera and just make sure our distance is sort of in an optimal area and then I can either click on the play button or click on the button on the back of the scanner and it is now scanning. I like to start the scan by first having it still and then I can power on my turntable so it starts turning around. So I've let it do a full rotation. I'm going to pause it and then stop my uh, turntable. And obviously we haven't captured the bottom of this and probably directly on top either and some of the underside areas. So what we need to do is flip this object around so it can capture a different angle. So we will just lay it on its side and I like to pick a spot where it's fairly feature rich. So we're going to go back to the, here and we're going to give it a second to try and realign itself. So if we just click on play it will give it a second and it should figure this out. There we go. So now it's it's reorientated itself so it knows where to continue the scan. And I'm just going to turn on my turntable again so it starts rotating. And now we should slowly go around and get all that bottom area as well. And I'm going to pause, turn off my scanner. Obviously if I had a manual turntable I could control this a bit easier without having to plug and unplug this turntable all the time. Uh, but in my case I have to disconnect it. And now I'm going to do it on this side. And I wanted to get that feature rich area. And then again, I'm going to push play, let it think about positioning and try and align itself. There we go. And then do another rotation. All right, I think that's enough. So pausing it again, turning off the turntable. I'm just going to sit this up so you can see it. And if we have a look around our model, there is a lot of extra data, but first we're going to clean that up in a second. We can complete our scan and we'll say yes. And this is what it looks like so far. So we can kind of get an idea of how well it's captured. We could add additional layers to this and realign it, which I'll cover in a future tutorial video. Um, in this case, I don't think we'll need it, but we can clean this up a bit just to make the processing a bit easier. So what we can do is if you see down here, it says shift plus left click to select objects, control plus left click equals deselect. So if I hold down shift and just circle areas, I can then delete those selections. I can also change the tool, the lasso tool to a rectangular select, uh, but I prefer the lasso. So I'm just going to go around all these bits, rotating it around as I need. So I'm just going to go around all these parts as I need and just delete whatever I think is not part of the object I actually need. And this data is all just um, probably reflections from the scanning surface that it picked up on. There we go. I think that's cleaned up pretty well now. We're just left with the actual model itself and no other extra background noise. Now we need to optimize our mesh. So here, because we're using a small object, we could either go 0.1 or 0.15. I'm just going to leave it at 0.15 in this case. I think that'll be enough. If you want extra detail, you can drop it down to 0.1, but it's going to take longer. And the sensitivity I'm going to leave at one. So we just click on that and it will start optimizing. And depending on your system performance, how much scan data there is, this could take five minutes, it could take 15 minutes, but we'll just let it run at course, but we'll just let it run it through. Okay, we're back. Uh, there is still a little bit of geometry left, uh, but we can again clean that back up. So just doing the same thing to select areas, holding shift and left click. So I'm just going to go through and clean all this up again a little bit. All right, that's looking good. And the model itself is looking pretty good as well. I don't see any obvious holes or anything, any missing geometry on the bottom. Obviously, when you zoom out a little bit more, it's a bit easier to see, but this isn't the final result just yet. What we need to finally do is do our mesh setting processing. So here is the, the final mesh optimization. The main thing we want to look at is our faces. The lower the faces, the less detail there's going to be. And because it's a small, rich object, we want it to be fairly detailed. So 
So we're gonna bump our faces right up and it's not a huge object as well. So we don't have to worry about the face count too much. Denoise is just gonna be zero, making sure hole filling and closure is on so it completes the entire model. And then we can just click on that to let it process. So that was much quicker this time to do that part. It only took about a minute. The previous step of the mesh optimization was about, about five minutes. So here is our final scan. And I think that is looking really nice. So very simple to use, only one scan. We can add additional scans, but for this particular object, I don't think we need those extra layers. And I'll show you how to do that in a future tutorial. But for what we have here, I think that is very detailed, very nice. One final thing we can do is with the CR scan auto, it does do 24 bit color capture. So we can texture our or color map our object. So again, just here, there's no additional settings. All we have to do is click on color mapping and let it process. And there is our color capture. Now, I think in this case, it hasn't done a great job at color capture. I think if you were to put an object in a more uniform lighting area, like a light box, and then scan it in that environment, I think you'd get a much better capture. But I mean, for a quick color capture, and that probably took about, I don't know, three to five minutes to process then. I think that's a pretty decent job. The good thing about Creality Scan software is that it's also auto saving along the way. So you don't have to hit save every time. And if it does crash, which I haven't had many crashes at all, honestly, it's not going to lose all your work, at least from my experience so far. And the other good thing about it is you, don't, you can go back to other points of the scanning process. So if you look at your, your scan, you'll see the origin, the point cloud, the mesh and the color. And there's a little eye icon on what you're actually looking at. So at the moment, we're on color we can click on mesh and that's going to load our mesh or we could go back to our point cloud it's going to load our point cloud you then given that option to also maybe you felt like the face count was too high and you want to reduce that so you could reduce the face count and process again and get a new mesh so it's quite convenient being able to make those changes and never really being locked in to what you've scanned and like i said if you wanted to add more detail maybe you did miss something underneath you could go back to your project board add a new scan scan and then scan the object from a different angle to try and capture that area and then align those two scans and process and you know therefore end up with a higher quality scan in the end but as i've said multiple times now i'm going to do a proper series of tutorials on how to use the cr scan otter and the creality scan software so that you can get the best scanning quality for your models so the final button on the right hand side is export and if you click on that you're going to get your save as menu pop up and the file types that it supports is ply stl or opj so in this case you might go stl and we're going to call it owl and then we just save that off. And then we can go and load that into our slicer and print this out. And here's the final result. I'm quite impressed with all the details it's managed to capture right down to all those individual feathers. And side by side, you can see it's even matching the same scale as the original model. That brings us to the end of this video. So to show your support, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. This will mean that you'll be notified when I release the tutorials that I plan to do for this scanner and the Creality Scan software. So until then, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.